Data science and machine learning are highly sought after skills in the job market. Data scientists are expected to analyze and process large amount of data and develop powerful algorithms. With the growth of AI nowadays, most organizations will need data engineers to help them make informed decisions about data. I'm Josh and I'm an AI engineer at Google and I recently switched from data engineering to data science. Yes, you heard it right. I'm no longer a data engineer and after about four years of data engineering experience, I recently switched my team from data to AI in Google Cloud. In this video, I'm going to talk about three things. One, what's the difference between a data engineer and a data scientist? What different skills are there? What's the potential job market situation, etc. Second, I'm going to talk about uh, why did I switch uh, from data engineering to data science? And uh, third, I'm going to talk about how did I make this switch so that anybody who is interested in doing the same thing, they can apply some of my learnings as well. Before we get started, I would just like to highlight that don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. So let's jump right in. So let's sort out the basics. What is the fundamental difference between a data engineer and a data scientist? Data engineer develops, constructs, tests, and also maintains uh, different types of data architectures, maybe databases or some other type of large scale processing system. And a data scientist cleans and massages and then uh, analyzes all this big data in a way that is helpful to the final business need by maybe developing some model or maybe doing some analysis on top of it. To understand the difference of responsibility exactly between a DE and a DS, I found a very cool diagram on the internet and let's take a look at that. Data scientists are closer to business stakeholders. They require more of a business understanding, but it's not that you can completely get away with it in data engineering. And second is data understanding. What is the data model? What are the data warehousing techniques? How is the data stored, retrieved, archived, etc.? This skill is emphasized more on the data engineering side. Data importing, again, uh, a lot of data engineers, what they do is uh, take in inputs from multiple sources and first of all, bring it together somewhere. Data scientists also in some case do it, but not as rigorously as a data engineer and it does not really scale as much as on the data engineering side. Data cleaning and manipulation, both sides, both roles use this, but since this is one of the primary things that a data engineer does, is that make sure that the data is ready and in the format that data scientists are expecting. Again, this is more on the DE side. Statistical modeling and machine learning, well, obviously this falls more on the data science side and reporting and visualization, which again falls more on the data science side. That was essentially broadly categories of skills and comparing between these two roles. But now let's talk about exact set of skills. So I've created this table and I've put skills according to my understanding. The good thing is a lot of skills overlap. The skills that you see highlighted in green are common between both roles, SQL, Python, problem solving plus DSA and cloud understanding. All these four skills are required on both sides of the role and you cannot get away with them. Then some of the skills which are highlighted in yellow are kind of similar, but uh, they have some different type of flavor according to what role you're in. A lot of people think that just because you're a data scientist, you can get away with not knowing Spark. Well, that's not the case because uh, even though a lot of data volume is truncated by the time it reaches to a data engineer, the volume of data sometimes still exceeds several GBs. So you can't just use normal Python. You might end up using Spark before you uh, use different machine learning libraries. Then data engineers need to know different orchestration tools and real time services as well. But data scientists focus more on statistics and probability, machine learning. Data visualization is also a super important skill on the data science side and system design. Now, Again, this is common, but still very different on both roles. For example, on data engineering side, you might create a data architecture diagram that represents what different services you will use for what kind of stage in your pipeline. For example, what will you use for ETL? What will you use for orchestration, logging, monitoring, etc. But on data science side, the system design is more focused on how will you do the data modeling, data wrangling? How would you make use of uh, different models and how would you select the best one out of them? How would you optimize them, etc, etc. And then there are some additional common skills like Docker, Kubernetes, CICD, continuous integration, continuous deployment, infrastructure as a code, data catalog, 
and understanding of NoSQL databases. Now let's compare salaries offered in both of these roles. I've taken this data from payscale.com. So if you want to take a look at it, I'll link it in the description below. There's not a lot of difference in the salary. Both the roles are, I would say, still on the top end of what most IT engineers make. Now, second section of this video, why did I switch from data to AI? Now, I was in data engineering for four years. So the projects were kind of getting repetitive for me where I was kind of setting either the foundational infrastructure setup and setting up the data pipeline and then ultimately just keep enhancing it once it is done. Don't get me wrong, data engineering is much more wider than this. In fact, I've created a separate video on what is data engineering. I'm going to link it down in the description below if you want to take a look. But the point was, I was just kind of getting tired of doing the same thing, staying in the same role after four years. And I wanted to explore something new and I had this opportunity in conversational AI and I just took it. The second reason that I wanted to move was the general rise of AI everywhere that you see nowadays with models like ChatGPT or Bar taking the world by storm and uh, so many advancements coming every single day in AI. So I feel that somewhere five years down the line, even if you are a data engineer or a data analyst, you will need to have good understanding of machine learning and AI. But if I enter this world right now, it would put me in slightly better position. Third reason is that if you typically see in a data processing project or pipeline, DE role usually comes first and data scientists usually get exposed to it later on in the pipeline. Now, if I want a more of a leadership role like data lead or a data architect or technical architect, I need to have understanding of data engineering as well as data science because that essentially completes the pipeline. This might not apply to everybody. So for example, uh, somebody might want to take the specialized approach versus the generalized approach and that's completely fine. So how exactly did I make this switch from data engineering to data science? So ever since I joined Google, I, I always uh, emphasized on my work that I did previously that was more closer to machine learning compared to data engineering to my manager so that if such opportunities come in the future, he would remember to put my name for it. Then I was already working on a project where I was like the only data engineer in a team of data scientists. So they had the system created and they wanted to capture different metrics and create a data pipeline. So this way I got to understand their technology, their terminology, their metrics, uh, way of working, etc. Then this helped me uh, ultimately when I was moving to that team because uh, I had already done my networking and knew a lot of people in that team before I even moved in. Also at Google, we have this 20% project system. So apart from the 80% of work that you do on day to day basis, you have the liberty to choose the rest of 20% project according to your preference, which can be completely different. So there I worked with one of the product managers uh, on, on a generative AI based uh, project and there I got to learn a lot of different things about uh, LLM models and how to best tune them, how to best prompt them, etc. This also exposed me better to move from data to AI. So if you want to make this transition in your company, what I would suggest is uh, you keep talking to your manager and expressing your interest. There's nothing wrong with that. Maybe try to find a project that aligns more uh, in where you want to go next. If you can't find an official project, that's fine. I mean, just talk with uh, the team members uh, of let's say data science team. Uh, if you want to go there, maybe ask them out. Is there any place where you can help them? And if you can deliver that on top of your actual project as well, you can highlight this as an achievement to your manager as well. And also the data science team would know your impact and would understand that. Yeah, I mean, you're really committed to making this transition. Either you have the projects to work on at your workplace or you don't. If you don't, then you have to focus on some personal projects. And I know a great place where you can do just that. Just go to Project Pro. There are 3000 plus uh, free recipes and 250 plus end to end projects here. You would get an idea of real industry great projects by industry experts, ready made solutions to uh, real business problems and detailed explanation as well. You would also have an option to connect to top data developers for career guidance and build your confidence. 64% of users report that they have saved about 40 days of effort by reusing their ready-made project solutions, which is absolutely key if you want to make this type of transition and want to learn as many things as possible.
Thank you so much Project Pro for sponsoring this video and uh, I'm going to give that link in the description and in the comment section. If you use my link then you'll get a lot of additional discounts. Also I know that I'm uploading this video after a very very long time so there was a reason for it so I was just kind of feeling burned out in, in my day to day work and uh, also putting a lot of time for YouTube that was just not possible for me at the time so I had to prioritize my actual work and had to let go some of my content creation which I really love to do by the way uh, but uh, I mean finally I'm in a place where I've recovered from that I also went to a couple of trips one for Vietnam and one for uh, Britain and when I went to London actually I also got to look at uh, the London Google office I went to a couple of offices but the one that I loved the most was the Google London 6PS office I mean this office was just awesome it had uh, great cafes overall the vibe of this place was just amazing the building itself was huge and the interiors and best part about it was the rooftop i mean it had one of the best rooftops in london where you could see the entire city and just chill uh, when the sun is out and that's about it i hope this video helped you somehow and if you have any more questions or something that you would like to add feel free to add it in the comment section i would love to chat about it also don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already See you next time.